and we want you to stay connected. God is doing something through the epicenter of worship. And again, thank you for joining us today. May God bless you.
Hey, thanks for joining us today. We are so excited. We would like to invite you to participate in giving and contributing to our ministry as we work to spread the gospel around the world. You can join us through our website at epworship.com and uh, click the giving tab. Also, if you are a texter, you can text to give through Tithely. And the number is one 371 374 Type give in the message line. Your contributions, free will offerings allow us to bless children, to minister to those who are on the margins of our society, and again, spread the gospel around the world. Thank you for your generosity. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on today. From the bottom of our heart, we truly appreciate the fact that you tune in every Sunday to be a part of the EOW family. And we just can't say enough how much we truly thank you for that. Hey, uh, make sure that you hit those likes and that you hit those um, hearts. Uh, go ahead and start doing that. Um, and also, please, you know, start a watch party. You know, share this. Share this with someone else. You know, also, that is also a form of evangelism. Just want to give you a uh, heads up on that. As well. So share. Share with the good news. You know, the good news of what the Lord, you know, is doing. And then also, don't forget that you can also follow us on YouTube. Um, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. You know, spread the love. Hey, um, we also want to remind you to follow us on Facebook, and uh, I know many of you all are on YouTube, but if you are on Facebook, please, you can um, also subscribe, but just hit like, and also when it says, would you like to follow at the center of worship, hit that yes, and every time we go live, you should get a notification on your phone. Now, we have a couple of very important announcements that i like to cover with, with us. Today. We're entering a new month, and so I would like to say a special thanks to uh, the United Methodist Church who helped uh, episode restore the broken cross that is lying in the front of the church, right in front of the big, beautiful, picturesque window. And so our community partners came and brought the wood and did all the custom uh, measurements and we worked as a joint congregation to restore the cross. Now, if you did not, if you were not a part of it, you can read the, um, the article in the City Pulse. So check out last week, they printed an, uh, they did an article in the City Pulse. So go check that out. Also, we'd like to announce that Epicenter will be uh, starting in the month of September. And we are very close in finishing all the details will be one of the COVID-19 testing sites and uh, we'll, pro we'll be providing uh, COVID testing through uh, the Ingham County Health Department and the Michigan Health Department uh, three days a week by appointment only. These will be swab tests. It'll be a four minute process. People will be in and out. And so we want to also spread the love on that. We put out job uh, descriptions. We're hiring uh, four people did not respond to those job descriptions you might want to jump on it because time is running out so we want to remind you of that and our parking lot services will begin on September the 13th we are working to add an extra dimension or, or, extra, or an extra detail to that we want to broadcast it over an FM signal so as you're sitting in the parking lot you can stay in your car and hear it through an FM signal. So again, we want to thank you for joining us. We're we got a long way to go before we get to 2021. So let's let's roll together. What you got, baby? Yeah, and I, you know, and I just want to say that I realize or that we recognize that um, 2020 has really been an um, extremely challenging time um, for everyone, and it seems um, it seems as if every day there's something. New that's happening. Um, 
good or bad, good and bad, you know, that's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. And I just want to, um, I've been thinking about this um, throughout the week and throughout the day, you know, often um, we kind of uh, put out uh, positive toxic, uh, toxicity, right? Um, it's going to be okay, it's going to be good, you know, and, and that's the, it is going to be, you know, um, that's hope. You know, forecasting hope, bringing hope. Um, but at the same time, we also have to realize that and recognize, you know, be true to how we're really feeling in the, mo in the moment, right? And it's okay, you know, as Christians to do that. Often we don't um, say that, you know, that it is okay um, to feel how you are feeling in the moment, right? You know, we kind of dismiss those emotions, but God is here. He gave us those emotions, right? You know, He talks about, um, you know, He will, right? Um, he talks about, blessed are those who mourn, right? Um, for they shall be comforted, right? Um, and so we have to also recognize um, that as well. And so at this time, I just wanted to just kind of acknowledge that, acknowledge that, to put that in the space that there is a lot going on. Right, and to be true to how you're feeling in the moment, so that we, so that healing and restoration, you know, can to begin to take place. Right, that can't truly um, happen until we're true to, to how we're actually feeling. Right, speaking truth to truth. Right, um, and so I just wanted to put that out there, you know, in the air. You know, acknowledge how you're truly feeling. You know, in this moment, so that healing and restoration can begin to take place, all right? Um, and so in the chat, what I would like for you to do, um, just to list how are you taking care of yourself? You know, what kind of things are you doing um, to really take care of yourself in this time? And if you don't want to answer that question, we got another question for you. We'd like for you to look for someone that you recognize in the comment section that's online with us. And I'd like for you to answer this question. And I want you to uh, direct it towards persons that you recognize. I appreciate you for. And so you're saying that to someone in the church, in our community that you know. And you want to say, hey, I appreciate you for your kindness or for, you know, your encouragement or whatever it might be. Or you can say, you are appreciative for. So thank you again. We are going to move over. Worship. Now we got a special EOW guest on today, a uh, young man that uh, was a part of our ministry uh, many years ago, but God has blessed him and he's a recording artist. And so we want to welcome Tyrone Foster to this morning's and today's worship services. God bless you and we'll see you soon. As your hands are lifted in this place, I just come to offer you a word of encouragement in the midst of uncertainty and in the midst of calamity. This is what the Lord is saying. I will keep you in.
God bless you, family. I want to thank you for joining us today. I've got a word I'd like to share with you, and we're going to take the next seven weeks, and we're going to look at the letters that Jesus wrote to the seven literal churches. They were real churches in the province of Asia Minor, Minor, and um, I'm really excited about this. I believe God's got something for us. So before we jump in, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your protection. We thank you for the revelation that we hold in our hearts concerning your character and your ways and your words. And we thank you, Lord, for our friends and family that have joined us here today uh, in this service. We ask that you would touch our hearts and move us to a greater place of purpose. In Jesus name. Amen. Pray God's blessings over you. So our new series is going to be entitled Love Letters. Love Letters letters. Jesus wrote seven letters to seven churches in Revelation. And I want us to look at that. So over the next, so again, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to sit with these, these words during this time that we're in to help guide us and to ground us. It is my prayer that as we sit with these letters, we will be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Number one, commend us. I think sometimes we we anticipate that the Lord is going to like, you know, uh, whack us over the head. But there are things that that the Holy Spirit wants to say, hey, daughter, hey, son, you're doing a great job in that area. So I want you to hear the voice of the Lord commend you. 
I also want you to lean in when the Holy Spirit is trying to critique us as a community in your personal life and uh, be willing to, to yield to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And then last but not least, to comfort us, commend and to critique and to comfort us as we go through uh, the times that we're living in. Be encouraged, man. Be encouraged, sir. Be encouraged, man. God's got a word of comfort for us. So when we look here, it's so important that we try to tie in what God is saying. Last week, Dr. Gibson preached and ministered an amazing word. I want to thank him for ministering to us. He preached, uh, I have seen the Lord. And this was Mary's message that she proclaimed after the resurrection. She had a revelation. She had seen and experienced something that others hadn't in the church. They were all in the same church, all in the same Christian community, but everybody having experienced the same thing. She had a revelation. And so the Lord began to move with me on this. And so I want, I want to build upon power of the people. Now that we know we have power, let's talk about where that power is and what we do with it, right? And so let's, let's look at this thing. So in Revelation chapter 1, verses 9 through 13, and verse 20 are the focus verses. Now, I won't have the opportunity to go through each one, but I just want to look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. He says, I, John, your brother and partner. Notice he says, I'm a partner in tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus. There are three things that are so cute, so, so key. He said, I was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. It's an announcement. Write what you see and put it in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamum, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And so John says, I turned, in verse 12, I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. And, and on turning, I saw, now when, when he first turned, he said, I saw seven golden lampstands. Oh my God. And in the midst of the lampstands, lamp stands, one like the son of man. And so in verse 20, he goes on to talk about what the mystery of the seven golden uh, lampstands and the seven stars that was in his hand. So I'd like to introduce our new series, our new series, Love Letters, Love Letters. You see, this is all about having a revelation. Satan don't want you and I to, to, to hold to the revelation that we have in our hearts and in our spirits. John said in Revelation chapter one, verse one, he said, the revelation of Jesus, there it is. That's what this is about. The next couple of weeks, this is about making sure you and I, and uh, we as a community, we do not let go of the revelation of Jesus. You can have a revelation of everything else, but and say don't care about all that. But if you got a revelation of Jesus, you have the very thing that can expose him, right, and, and reduce him to powder. I mean, I'm talking about totally destroy the kingdom of darkness with the revelation of Jesus. So Paul says, I was, I was, I was on Patmos for a revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, that's the church, the things that must soon take place. I believe we're living in the last days. I believe that our belief system drives our behavior. You know what I'm saying? I think when you look at our behavior, our Christian behavior, I think, I think, you know, sometimes as a Christian scientist, I like to refer to myself. I look at Christians' behavior. I listen at their talk. And I say to myself, what belief system is driving this behavior? Because when you have a revelation of Jesus, there are just some things that you just don't say and you just don't do. So let's look at this. So the book of Revelation comes to us from the Apostle John, 
who was quarantined. Listen at this. This wasn't just a stay at home or John was quarantined on the island of Patmos. John was a political exile. And you can say that John had gotten into good trouble. Thank you, Jesus. He was a political exile sent to this volcanic remote island for preaching the gospel. The plan was for John to die in quarantine on Patmos. Let me tell you, I want to speak prophetically to you. And I want to say to you, you will not die in this season of quarantine. Mm -mm. No, you will not die. Say that to the person next to you sitting in your car. Oh God, high five them and say, you will not die. No, this is not our destiny. We got too much in us. For this to be the end of the story. And so I want you to know, I'm going to say this over there. Satan has a plan, but God always has a better and a bigger plan for our lives. And they sent John, they sent John to the island of Patmos to die. They quarantined him because he had gotten into good trouble. You see, you see, uh, Rome had Domitian, an emperor that was narcissistic. He, he attempted to deify himself, to create, make him like God, and to be the only God for those in the Roman Empire to worship. And it was people like the Apostle John that stood up against and not just speak truth to power, he, he spoke the gospel to power. He, he began to preach a message that was, that was uh, diametrically opposed to the ideology and the belief system of his nation. And that was called the gospel. And this is the reason why I have said that when we as ministers of the gospel, we preach the gospel and not all this other mumbo jumbo, we'll start getting arrested too. I think many of us, we ain't, we ain't got in good trouble. We need to preach the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus, the restoration, the reconciliation for all people, not just some. Christianity don't create an elite class and a middle class and a bottom class. No, what John was preaching was the love of Jesus to all people, period. And that got him in trouble. And I want to tell you right now, we're going to get in some good trouble. Yes, Lord, we're going to get into some good trouble when we go back to we go back to hold it on and, and speak in this thing that Jesus has given for us to proclaim to a dark world. And what happens oftentimes when you're in the midst of a quarantine, when you're in the midst of, of, of isolation, your mind and your heart, your emotions start, start, start playing tricks and you start asking critical questions. And one of the questions you start asking is, why am I in this condition or in this position? See, I want you to understand. See, see, see Satan always has a plan, but God has a what? A bigger and a better plan. And see, they knew that, that with John on the island of Patmos, I want you to think about this and apply this to your life. They knew that, see, Satan, that if we could isolate John and quarantine John, there would be three things that he couldn't do. Number one, he wouldn't be able to spread the gospel. Are y'all hearing this? They said, no, nah, if we lock him down, we put him on a volcanic island in an isolation, right? He would not be able to spread the gospel. Wrong again. Number two, if we put him on Patmos and we quarantine him, he would not be able to lead the church. Wrong again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They said that we quarantine John. There's no way he'd be able to be a leader. And sad enough told the church, I'm going to shut you down. You're not going to be able to meet on Sundays inside the little building. And, 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 and Christians were freaking out like we have to be inside in order to lead and to spread the gospel. That is not true. Same trick he played on John. They're trying to play on us. And then number three, they said if we lock John up, we put him in quarantine. You understand? He would not be able to encourage the Christian community to not participate in the worship of a false emperor, a narcissistic line of uh, uh, president, you understand? And so I want you to look at this thing. They said, if, if, if he's locked up, quarantine. If we lock him up now, they won't be able to spread the gospel. That's a lie. That he will not be able to lead. That's a lie. And number three, he won't be able 
to, 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 to tell and to, and, to, and to encourage the church to continue on in godly things. See, Satan has a plan. Hallelujah. But God has a bigger and a better plan. So, so when you understand that, you begin to understand why the flesh, when you're in a situation like John and like we are in, we start doubting God's love. We start asking God, well, God, do you love everybody? Because when you're in a quarantine, you start looking at everything. And so I want to say to you, don't doubt God's love during this season. No, Satan got a plan, but God always has a bigger and a better plan. You understand? God was the first one to come up with a B and B. It was a bigger and a better plan. And so here's what I want to say to you. How were you tested before you went in to quarantine? See, that's what's going to determine how you come out. See, John had already, you've been tried for this. You've been prepared. We, we've been prepared for this. You understand? John had been dipped into hot oil as Tertullian writes uh, to the church in the first century. The theologian Tertullian wrote that John had been dipped into hot oil and somehow that, 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 that hot oil that was designed to burn and, and to absolutely melt his body, John walked out of it. Thank you, Jesus. And he survived. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, what they didn't realize was John had already been dipped in oil. He had been anointed. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. Come on, look at somebody next to you and tell them I've been anointed. Say they can dip you. What, what? I've already been dipped in the power and the anointing and the oil of Almighty God. Do what you're going to do. See, pull upon the strength of how you've been tested before you go into quarantine. You went into quarantine. We went into COVID-19. Number two, I want you to look at what was your level of preparation? They say that John was an avid prayer warrior. They say that John was 80 years old as he was writing the, uh, these letters and receiving his reverence. I want to say to all the seniors, I know a lot of attention always be on the young folk, and we need to have attention on our youth. The youth are absolutely important, K through 12, absolutely, hands down. We are going to continue to lift up our youth. But let me tell you, all the senior saints and citizens, don't you lay down on God because you you don't reach senior citizen status. John was 80 and it was it was it was through the season of a season saint that God laid the greatest revelation on. See, God can't give everybody the revelation that he give other people because there's just not enough season, not enough foundation. It's not thick enough. The experience you understand? They said that John was, was such a, an avid prayer warrior that his knees were calloused. They were like, he had like, 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 uh, you see the guy skateboarding, they got them, them knee pads on. They say John's knees had, had just totally calloused like pads because he stayed on his knees. He stayed on his knees. He stayed before God. He stayed crying out to God. And see, this is what I'm saying is that your level of preparation is the reason why you're making it through this season. Thank you, Jesus. You think about that. Your preparation was so important. Write this down. Revelation hides in testimony. Satan knows that there's power in the believer's testimony. John said, I was here for a testimony. I was here to see something, experience something. And, and inside of your testimony, there is revelation. This is the reason why you always receive warfare around the area of your testimony. You understand me? Satan don't want you to open your mouth because when you open your mouth and testify, that means that you come through a test. And when you come through a test, you should have a testimony, which inside of the testimony is a revelation that the world don't have. 
And so I want to say to you during this time, don't you shut up. They might have a lockdown. They might have restrictions on how many people can gather. But listen, we can go anywhere in the spirit. Open your mouth and tell your testimony to everybody that will listen and everyone who will not listen. Just because they don't listen don't mean you can't tell it. Because around your testimony, you will see the greatest place of warfare. Why? Because there's revelation inside of your testimony. You see, revelation creates breakthrough believers. Revelation creates breakthrough believers. When, when you've got the revelation, when you've been through a test and you've got testimonies, back to back to back. The other night I had a dream. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, I was I was in uh, I was a soldier and we were behind enemy lines and and uh, we had gotten captured and and we were in the cars being taken to the enemy's uh, camp. And um, when we got to a checkpoint, I was in the third car. I was in the third car and, it, and the soldiers was opening the doors and they start shooting everybody. So I said, oh, my God. They killing everybody. So I, I played dead. I laid down in the back seat of the car up under another soldier. When they came to us, they thought we was dead, slammed the door and kept moving. I, I, I eased over the seat and got in the drivers and just started coasting because the, the, the soldiers had moved beyond the caravan behind us. And, and, and when I got to a certain point, I got out and, and, and the guy that I was laying under, he was shot and dying. So I put him on my back. And I started walking and, I, and, and, and so another soldier came up. I said, man, we trying to make it to uh, the American line. There's there's a border. The, ne the next checkpoint, he says, up here about he says about a half a mile up the road. And so as I was walking with my man, I kept checking on him because he, he had been shot and he was bleeding. And at some point he stopped responding. I said, are you there? And then when he was heavy, I said, are you there? And he, and I think at some point he died. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God was giving me a revelation. I can't tell you what he was telling me. I can just tell you the dream. But God was giving me a revelation. And when I tell it, that, that when I tell it, it, it break through. It causes me to be a breakthrough person in God. So let me give you this right here. Breakthrough believers. Breakthrough believers build breakthrough churches. That's why he don't want you to have a testimony. That's why he don't want you to make it through this time and be depressed and be down. Feel like you can't make it. Lift your head up. You're going to be all right. We're going to make it because we've been destined to make it. Breakthrough believers build breakthrough churches because of their spiritual input. I'll leave that right there and expound later. Number two, breakthrough believers experience deep intimacy with God. Breakthrough believers are unstoppable in kingdom advancement. When you have the revelation, you become a breakthrough believer. You become destined to rule in your sphere of influence. You're not a follower on your job. You are destined to rule because of the anointing and the revelation that you have. Breakthrough believers, they know how to access God through the spirit. You have an advantage. Thank you, Jesus. You subdue the kingdoms of darkness and break through believers' model total victory in Jesus. I want to end this message today. I'm so excited about this series. I don't know what to do. I believe, I believe God will speak to us. I want you to remember this. Satan has a plan, but God always has a B&B. &B. Write that down. God always has a bigger and a better plan. What do I expect? I expect for you to feel God tapping on your heart. As I end today, I read a story about Helen Keller and she was being taught, you know, Helen Keller was blind and she had a, a teacher that was teaching her. Her, uh, her teacher's name was Miss Sullivan. Miss Sullivan said, one day I'm going to teach Helen Keller about God. And so she began to tap out, tap the name of God on Helen Keller's hand. And she, she was trying to teach, she was tapping that thing out. She was tapping the name of God out and, and then she paused and to wait for Helen Keller to repeat it back. And uh, Helen Keller, and she, she, she tapped back. And I want to read what she tapped back. She, she tapped back to Miss Sullivan. Thank you for telling me God's name, Miss Sullivan, for he has touched me many times before. Helen Keller knew something of God's signature that she didn't get from nature. 
You understand? See, she already had a revelation. God had already touched her. And I want to say that, that, that Satan will not shut the church. A true church will rise out of this time with greater anointing, with greater thrust, and with greater breakthrough believers because we have been prepared for this moment. Hold on to that revelation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up your people now. We ask that you would bless us. We move forward this week with great victory. And I declare prophetically that your people will rise out of this with greater anointing, greater resources, and we will be able to have a greater capacity to love our city and those that you've called us to protect. We love you now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And this week, study the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 2. See you next week. We pray that this message has blessed you. If you would like to give your life to Jesus and you've been looking for God, looking for something more meaningful, and you want to get rid of the pain and you want to move into the joy and the prosperity of life through Christ Jesus, I want to offer you that today. We all need God. And Jesus Christ has died for you specifically and he offers you eternal life. He also offers a better life now. The Bible says that we should believe in our heart that Christ was raised from the dead. And through that faith, it becomes a defining moment. Angels rejoice and heaven becomes yours today. If you're listening to me and that is where you want to be, you want to cross that line. I want to ask you to join me in saying this prayer and receiving Christ into, into your life. Dear Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I confess my with my mouth. I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God. I believe. You are the Lord, and that God raised you from the dead. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash my heart. Come live in my life. Be the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me to walk with you and live for the rest of my life. Thank you for saving me and giving me the gift of eternal life in heaven with you. Amen. Friends, if you've said that prayer, I want to say to you, you are saved. Jesus Christ is now Lord of your life. And please... Contact us so that we can send you your Believer's Survival Kit. May God bless you, and I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We are so excited. We would like to invite you to participate in giving and contributing to our ministry as we work to spread the gospel around the world. You can join us through our website at epworship.com and uh, click the Giving tab. Also, if you are a texter, you can text to give through Tithely. And the number is 1-833-371-0374. Type give in the message line. Your contributions, free will offerings allow us to bless children, to minister to those who are on the margins of our society, and again, spread the gospel around the world. Thank you for your generosity. The role of the modern day church is absolutely critical because it fills a void in our community that no other institution can. Join us live on Facebook, Tuesdays and Sundays. Everyone is welcome. Hey, we want to thank you for joining us today for our live stream. If you are joining us via YouTube or Facebook, please make sure on Facebook to, to hit that like button as well as YouTube. Subscribe. We want to continue to push the word out to you. We have daily devotionals that will be coming out and we want you to stay connected. God is doing something through the epicenter of worship. And again, thank you for joining us today. May God bless you.